All right. Uh, first of all, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is A.B. Sam Thomas. Thank you, Darlene, for the great introduction. Uh, I'm the editor-in-chief of Entrepreneur Middle East. Uh, and before we dive into the discussion, I, I think we should address the elephant in the room that this is the last session of the day. It's been a long day. I'm sure all of you are tired, and it's uh, it's been a lot of insights being shared one after the other. However, I do want to say this is going to be an interesting session, and we are going to make it as interactive as uh, knowledgeable as we can. Uh, so just because I see the number of people in the room have reduced, I would first of all ask, can you please guys come and join us in the front so we can see you, so we can see your faces. Um, again, it's a great opportunity to meet new people as opposed to the same people you've been sitting next to for the whole day. Thank you so much. Also, it gets you up and going. Let's get the blood running. <laughs> Thank you so much. All right, so uh, as I mentioned, my name is A.B. Sam Thomas. I'm the editor-in-chief of Entrepreneur Middle East. We are the uh, official licensee uh, in the Middle East for uh, the American brand Entrepreneur. We have been working in the region since 2014. In, in fact, this is our 10th anniversary of being in the region. Uh, we have been, we are based out of Dubai, but we cover the entire region. So we have a presence, so to speak, in everywhere across the region from ranging from Qatar to Morocco. So um, yeah, we are very much uh, on ground with respect to the entrepreneurial ecosystem uh, of the region. Now, this particular session is about the opportunities that are presented for French brands that are looking to enter the GCC. So just so that we know who we are talking to, can I quickly get a show of hands? Uh, how many people here have been to the region before? Can you just raise your hands? Okay, fairly a good amount. Okay, how many of you represent French consumer brands that you know want to make a presence in the region? Again, raise your hands. Okay, okay. How many of you are from the GCC looking for partners within from France? Anyone? Okay, Michelle. <laughs> nice to see you there. Cool, good stuff. So. Uh, speakers, I hope you see who we are talking to, and I guess that will also allow us to distill the conversations uh, accordingly. So um, I'm going to ask each of you to introduce yourself, but at the, at the same time, I'm going to also ask you a question so that we keep this as dynamic as we can. Um, and first things first, let's, again, uh, set the baseline. Why should French brands look at the GCC? Uh, Princess Noura, first of all, just give us a little bit of a background. You have a great history, if I do say so myself. So yeah, let introduce yourself and then thank please you. talk to the thank question. Thank you, Abby, so much. And I just want to thank everyone that made it till the end. Yeah. Thank you for being here and listening to us. Honestly, it's a pleasure to be here. Um, so uh, just a bit of a background uh, about where my fashion background started. So I studied business, but I have never studied fashion in specific. But I worked in fashion as a business, and I created the first fashion week in Saudi Arabia in 2018, back when, listen to me, there were no policies in place, and uh, honestly, what a challenge, but we made it happen. We made uh, the world see that we do have local brands, but also we are welcome to global brands as well. Um, and uh, I have joined then after the Ministry of Culture, uh, where I have founded and created the Fashion Commission, which is uh, today still ongoing and under the Ministry of Culture. Uh, it was basically to support the local fashion ecosystem. And then I went back to private sector, created I my own company, so I am also an entrepreneur, but today I am really excited and privileged to have joined and as an advisor at Athem Investment who are spearheading and creating wonderful projects in the kingdom, not just in fashion, in multiple sectors, but in my capacity as their advisor, I am today, you know, uh, representing their, their, their fashion brands, but also encouraging local brands to be part of this movement. And Athem today has different Different, different sectors, and fashion being one of them, with 2,300 employees within that subsidiary company, 90% of them being females. This is just to say about... <laughs> yeah, <laughs> definitely you. worth it. Please. <laughs> Please. Um, 37 brands under their umbrella, five f 
French brands. And I'm sure I'm going to mention a couple of them, and I'm sure most of you know them uh, in the room. We have Kiabi, we have Tapaloi, we have Gemo. So these are the uh, multiple brands that exist under Lithium Investment, and we are really excited to look for more brands that are willing to come into this uh, region, uh, but also not just any brand. We want innovators, we want trendsetters, and we want to make sure that you know uh, we are adapting to the customer and target audience in the kingdom. So um, you know, I'll, I'll leave it to the rest uh, of my panelists. So I don't <laughs> want to take anyone's time, but uh... no, uh, Prince Andrew, <laughs> do do tell us. Like, let's start with that question. Yes. Like, why should the region matter to French brands? Absolutely. So if we look at the history between France and the region, we go way back. Our histories go way back. We have this exchange of culture. Uh, and the presence of French brands in the region has existed years and years ago. We are talking about the mindset of the GCC people looking at French brands as uh, you know, the, the, the best brands in the world. So uh, leave aside the history and the uh, excitement of having French brands and them traveling to France to shop from French brands. Imagine your presence in the region. Imagine your presence accessible to your target audience. This is, this is where it matters. And this is where you know, the history and the relationship between France and the region, and specifically also today I'm going to speak more about Saudi, it, it, go, it goes way beyond, way, way beyond that. So welcoming brands, uh, the, you, you don't need to like do so much because people already know about France and they are relevant to the history that we both share. It's more about how can you be positioned differently in the region? How can you you compete with the other brands that do exist. This is something that everyone needs to take into account. Talking about brands that are in the GCC, uh, perfect segue into uh, Geoffrey from Shell Who Group. First of all, just an introduction to yourself. And then let's talk about, I mean, you have brought a number of great brands uh, to the GCC. Any lessons learned, any common characteristics that make one successful as opposed to their uh, other? Yeah. So first of all, a few, a few words about Chaluk Group. So good evening, everyone. Uh, Chaluk Group is a leading luxury retailer in the Middle East, uh, created 70 years ago. Uh, we bought many brands, not only French, but many French brands in the Middle East. Um, brands like uh, Lacoste, uh, L'Occitane, strong joint ventures partner with uh, LVMH, uh, and recently a, a, a new rising star in the world of fashion, uh, Jacques Mus, as you mentioned. Um, the, uh, I would like to start to, to answer your question about the why French brands should be uh, sh should be interested in the in the Middle East? I will start uh, by figures. I will be a bit boring, and then I will talk about emotions. Uh, figures uh, quickly: the uh, luxury market in the Middle East is around 12 billion dollars. It represents four to five percent, four percent of the luxury uh, market worldwide. But we estimate that 60 to 70 percent of the luxury consumptions of GCC consumers happen when they travel, when they travel to Italy, when they travel to France, when they travel to Turkey, and more and more to the US. Um, so you can estimate that the GCC consumer represents barely 10 percent of the luxury market worldwide. So it, it's really a consumer that is, uh, it's, it's, you have to tap into when you are in the world of luxury. I'm going to talk about emotions now quickly. Um, the uh, luxury, the, the, young, the luxury consumer in the GCC is very fascinating. Uh, very young consumer, uh, early adopters, very digital, uh, very versed into uh, sustainability, circularity. Uh, maybe when I arrived in, in the GCC 12 or 15 years ago, the market was a bit of a Follow, following market, we, are, we were followers. Let's let's face it. Now I think it has changed completely. The the market is really running at the forefront of a lot of phenomenon and a lot of trends happening in the world. Once again, circularity. Uh, in the circularity report that Shalub has, uh, Shalub Group has issued a, a few months ago, we captured that 30, one third of the consumers have already bought pre loved products, and one th or the third is, um, is expecting to do it in the coming years. So it's really a market that is now extremely, extremely um, uh, mature and innovating very quickly. So I think for a brand, it's very important to also be present in a market that is changing so fast and that in certain areas will start setting the scene of things happening worldwide. Um, and I think. 
I, I will stop here for, for when it comes to, 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 to emotions and come back just on the last point, which is the diversity of the uh, GCC market. It's not one size fits all. The, we are, you have in the GCC like five lu sizable luxury markets. Uh, you have, I would say, the pioneer, which is Kuwait. It, it used to be the more advanced market in the 60s and the 70s. Um, maybe a bit softening sometimes these days. Uh, you have the UAE, which remains in luxury, the, the major market. You have the rising star, Saudi Arabia, growing extremely fast in the wake of the transformation. Already the first market in terms of prestige beauty, still behind in terms of uh, fashion and, and luxury. All those markets are very different. UAE still remains very much driven by tourism, like Bahrain. Uh, Kuwait is a very sophisticated market. Uh, KC consumer is very young, very, uh, consumer is very proud of their roots, their um, uh, Arabic roots. They are the very creative young people. Uh, we have created a Chaloub uh, fashion incubator to cater to all this innovation and all the Abaya uh, local designers. So it's very vibrant market. So we are talking about different markets in the GCC, and this is one of the things we need to tell people who are considering the region to not paint the entire region with one brush. Different markets require different strategies. And uh, we have with us uh, Patrick from uh, representing Abu Dhabi Investment Office. Uh, first of all, just introduce yourself and then talk about like the UAE market and maybe specifically with respect to Abu Dhabi. Why does Abu Dhabi make sense for a brand setting up for the region? Good afternoon, everyone, and uh, thank you for being here at this advanced uh, hour of the day. Um, uh, the Abu Dhabi Investment Office basically is an enabler of international and domestic GCC investment into strategic uh, industrial sectors of the UAE economy and, most importantly, of the Abu Dhabi economy. A certain number of industrial clusters, uh, as we name them, have been identified as priority sectors for fast track development. This is in the context you've heard this morning about Vision 2030 and Vision 2040. Abu Dhabi has uh, the vision called Falcon Economy 2040 and a certain number of industrial sectors, including the retail sector, have been identified as those accelerations opportunities for the economy. Accelerations meaning incremental uh, investment in those areas, incremental um, employability, uh, research development, and many other aspects. The retail program um, was created a couple of years ago with the ambition of fast-tracking the development of the retail sector within, uh, within the Emirate, improving its overall positioning and quality within the global retail um, ecosystems and complementing through investments and invite of international companies its own ecosystem through for example, accelerated uh, retail technology companies that would venture in, accelerated talent development in touch with international universities and education programs, inviting foreign brands which are not in the UAE today or which are not in the uh, GCC to come through the Abu Dhabi uh, platform. Uh, we actually see Abu Dhabi not as the destination, we see Abu Dhabi as a gateway. We see Abu Dhabi as the entry point into your retail journey within the GCC, and I will uh, just mention a couple of reasons why. Um, and I think echoing what uh, uh, Princess Noura and, and Geoffroy just mentioned, you are dealing within the GCC today with about a 50 million consumer base, one of the most affluent in the world. So when it comes to the retail sector, whether you are in beauty, in fashion, in home design, decors, whatever the product category is, the discretionary spending capability is actually quite amazing. Uh, just to give you a number, uh, when it comes to Abu Dhabi, we are dealing with GDP per capita at $55,000, the third largest in the world in terms of GDP per capita. When you're looking at the uh, demographics, and I think it was mentioned during the day today, uh, you have 60% of the uh, resident population below the age of 40. You get 30% when you include all the expats below the age of 40, with substantial discretionary income and a very affordable tax environment, as we know, that competes basically very well within, within the region. So affordable, 
basically quality of life, investment opportunities for foreign brands, and I'll talk about that in, uh, in, in a moment in terms of what are some of those pathways to invest in the GCC uh, through the gateway, as we call it, of, um, of, of Abu Dhabi. And maybe one, one, one more comment, uh, and I think we may mention it. Uh, the region is no longer, and during, during the breaks, okay, somebody was asking me how much of an emerging market are we dealing with. Well, the notion of emerging is past. And I think it's an important uh, framing because the GCC today uh, in the luxury sector, it's $4 billion, 10% of the global luxury products consumption is influenced by brands and by the consumers and their digital connections in the, in the, in the Middle East. Uh, the competition is not just for French brands. We see Korean brands entering, Japanese brands entering, Southeastern Japanese uh, and Asian brands entering. So. The dynamics are changing, which is why we believe the moment is now for a lot of the actors within the French retail ecosystem and French brands to start playing, and there are multiple ways. We'll talk about that on how you can do that. Cool. Thank you, uh, Patrick. Uh, again, we have just been talking about the UAE and uh, Abu Dhabi. Uh, Amal, I want to go to you first before I get to you, Hugo. Um, you know, you, you are a multi-hyphenate personality. I will let you introduce yourself. But purely in your role as an entrepreneur, you have worked both in Qatar and now in France as well. Can you talk about the similarities you've seen between the markets or differences even? Like what works in one market as opposed to the other? Uh, yeah, what have been your personal insights that can be of use to the brands uh, sitting in the room? Well, when we talk about the similarities between the two countries, um, I believe that both um, French and Qataris, they appreciate the high-end luxury brands and the niche brands. But when it comes to France, France is an international destination for the whole world. So people from all over the world seeking just to come to Paris for, for, for the experience of visiting the heritage and historical fashion houses in Paris. And I think this is a dream for everyone. Uh, when it comes to Qataris, uh, Qataris are, let's say, 90% 90, 90 are the consumer of the high-end brands in, in Qatar. So it's, it's much appreciated than expect or, you know, international uh, visitors to Qatar. So, uh, sorry, Amal, uh, you didn't introduce yourself. Can I ask yes. you to introduce yourself yes. for the uh, audience I mean, so they know who you are? Yeah. And I want them all be um, searching you on yes. Instagram. My name is Amal Amin, and I'm um, the founder and the chairman of Amal Amin Group. Amal Amin Group is uh, taking care, it's the mother company of uh, a lot of companies. Uh, um, one of them is Amal Amin Real Estate and Amal Amin Beauty. Uh, the retail side is Amici de Moda, the department store, La Boutique Blanche. Uh, that's when it comes to the fashion, Mahin Jewelry, and the FMB, which is Vogue Cafe. Right. So clearly she has a finger in a lot of different pies. Um, and I just want to point out, like, so far we've been talking about, you know, uh, the experience that uh, customers expect. And I think there might be a, a mindset that, oh, we we're just talking about brick and mortar, but I do want to talk about online. And that's where Hugo comes into the picture. First, again, Hugo, just introduce yourself and then talk about the online aspect of things. Like, what do luxury consumers in the GCC expect from a retail point of view? Thanks a lot first. Uh, very happy to be with you all uh, tonight. So my name is uh, Hugo Weber. I'm uh, leading the corporate affairs at Miracle, which is a French unicorn. You see that I have my, uh, my tag about the French tech. Um, we are basically helping more than 450 retailers, department stores, and industrial players to fight back against the big tech giants, mostly Amazon and AliExpress, by allowing them to set up, launch, and operate their very own marketplace. But not in the same way that Amazon is doing it, which with a much more curated approach. Uh, and honestly, all the uh, speeches that you have done are basically music to my ears. When I hear that, uh, I was honestly already convinced that it was a great destination for uh, French brands, uh, for French tech too. Uh, but I'm even more convinced because you were mentioning that the region is young, they, they have a lot of income, and they are digital natives. And for all, the, all of that reason, uh, the e-commerce sector has boomed and will be booming more and more in, uh, in, in the Gulf region. Uh, 2023, 
the market of e-commerce in the region, it's almost $30 billion. In less than three years, it will be $50 billion. So I cannot see any French brands, any French retailers, any other retailers not looking at it at, as a promising market. Honestly, finding today uh, um, a gross CAGR of almost 12% in the next three years is magic for any brands. Uh, and I would also say that there is some risks with that. Um, the first risk that I see is the disintermediation risk. Um, Amazon is present in the region. You may know that they have bought, uh, back in 2017, souk.com, uh, which, uh, which is a marketplace. Uh, they are, they are all, also some other initiatives such as noon.com, and more recently, uh, Trendyol, uh, that uh, a Turkish group um, promised a letter of intent to launch a, a marketplace. And this is becoming a risk for the local retailers, the local importers, the local business to lose uh, this destination and the business towards someone else. I totally agree, especially uh, COVID proven that. And online today, the competition is just one click away. You, of course, there is still this destination, brick and mortar, where you're looking for an experience, but you should today extend this experience online and continue to serve the needs of your consumers online. And only the marketplace is able to provide such an experience. If you are not offering the good product at a good moment, with a good price, with a good experience, you're losing your customers, basically. Just to put a number on what uh, Geoffrey is, is mentioning, um, sorry, uh, Hugo, uh, the uh, GCC online market is about equivalent today in penetration to what you would have in France, which is a highly, basically, penetrated market, and yet with a lot of opportunity. You get a, the US is about 25% online sales today, and we know the transformation of retail in that market. France is about 10, 10.4% today. GCC is about 9.7% right now. So, but the CAGA that was mentioned is really a very, very powerful acceleration. And brands really have two ways of entering. One, indeed, through their own direct-to-consumer channel, uh, and I think the same way you would have in your brick and mortar, your own store and standalone store, and you may well be with Gary Lafayette or Printemps as a corner, you have to think about it in terms of digital mindset in the same way. You need to have your own direct-to-consumers or marketplace-related online store, the most efficient and, and hopefully profitable possible, and then you need your own freestanding standalone retail stores. And we all know for geography, but weather reason as well, the Middle East and GCC is uh, such a climate that indoor retailing provides you with a uh, 360, you know, 12 months a year type of opportunity in terms of retailing. So I think it's pretty much clear like why you should focus on the region. I don't know if you looked at the numbers that were mentioned on stage. It was like all billions. So I think we have set the, set the stage that, yes, you need to be looking at the GCC. Now I kind of want to talk about, like again, for the brands in the room, give them a game plan for actually entering the GCC. Uh, Princess Noura, again, can you talk about from your experience at Olita Game even, um, what should, be, what should brands be looking for? How should they enter the region? From your personal opinion, what you've seen works, what doesn't work? Yeah. So, so um, as I mentioned before, I, I did sit in public sector and in private sector. So th the landscape is ever changing in Saudi Arabia specifically. Uh, with the transformational projects that are you know, happening and giga projects that exist, um, my advice is really partner up, and maybe I'm going to be a bit biased over here, but partner up with a partner that has been in the region for quite some time and has done business, and not just focusing on tier one cities. So with the Ithame investment, the focus is on tier two and tier three cities, because at the end of the day, quality of life needs to be provided across all regions and across all cities. So um, at the end of the day, you know, focusing on that and accessing the market through all these gateways um, is crucial and partnering with, with, with a company that actually understands the landscape and has been in this region and has been doing business and, and you know, welcoming brands from abroad is crucial because if you do try to come in uh, on your own, trust me, it's not going to be as easy. It's better to talk and have these conversations with people that have a footfall in the market and understand that. 
Geoffrey, same question to you. Uh, yeah, for brands looking at advice. Yeah. As you can imagine, I can only agree with Princess Laura. Having said that, uh, the first recommendation I, was, I would say is be strong in your own home market. Uh, you need to have a strong awareness where you are, where your home country is. Um, don't believe that the Middle East is an easy market. Yes, it's a growing market. Well, yes, it's a promising market. It's not an easy game. If you lack awareness in, your, in Europe, in France, for a French brand, you will not make it in the... Uh, the GCC consumers are traveling. They know what's out there. So you need to be strong first in your own market. Um, second of all, of all, you need a statement. Uh, I think... Uh, in-store experience remains very important. The consumer is extremely digital savvy, but they appreciate the physical experience. They're extremely demanding. They love, love personal shopping, VIP uh, experience in the store. So you need to deliver these, uh, these experience. And that's why it will be music to, to the ear of, of uh, Patrick, but uh, uh, great malls like uh, Dubai Mall or uh, are, are really so much of a statement because they allow this, ex this amazing experience to the luxury brands. Um, you need to be digital uh, in terms of content. You need to adapt your content to the... Uh, it, it goes to the point where the language needs to be... Even the, the level of Arabic that you use uh, in Saudi Arabia, it's not uh, any Arabic. You have to... Uh, Riyadh and Jeddah is not exactly the same. Uh, so you need really to be uh, as precise, as uh, customized as, as you can. Obviously, there are a lot of do's and don'ts in terms of content. You need to partner uh, in the sense that Princess Noir was mentioning, but also you need to partner with local designers. Collaboration. Collaboration is every, everywhere, but in this part of the world, because of this proud, this strong heritage, having a collaboration with local designers makes a strong, strong difference. Uh, you need to feel and breathe. The, so remain true to yourself, which for luxury brands is a challenge. You, don't, you shouldn't compromise and jeopardize your, your DNA, but at the same time, you need to make space to embrace local influences uh, uh, and to make space to the local, yes, heritage and, and pride that exists in the, in the Middle East. And that would be it for, for me. <laughs> you know, I've heard like do's from both of you. Amal, I'm going to come to you and ask you for like don'ts. Basically, from what you've seen, you said like the Qatari consumer is extremely discerning. They know what they're looking. What are the mistakes brands make when targeting them? And what should they be doing better? Let's go for the don'ts for a while. I think the market research. Because there is a demand, but for any... French brand, they really need to do the market research and to keep in mind the tradition and the limitation because not anything can be said in our region. Uh, and I really think that marketplaces can, can be a really good agile tool for brands to enter those markets, uh, both for the sellers on marketplace or the brands, uh, uh, but also for the retailers in the region to test new products. Basically, uh, on the marketplace, you have your direct assortment from the retailer and you're adding new categories, new product from third party sellers, French brand, for example. So you can test basically at no cost the attractiveness of your product on a specific market. So it's super agile and you can really adapt. Uh, and on the other side of the coin, so for the retailers, the local retailers, it's also a super way to extend the assortment and better serve the needs of the local consumers by finding niche brands, uh, super uh, designed products, uh, new categories that you want to offer in the market and created, creating this, uh, this, uh, this super efficient connection. And we have already seen some retailers, including uh, Shaloub, taking this, uh, this, uh, this stance. Uh, they recently launched um, the marketplace activity of faces.com, but we are also serving a lot of other retailers in the region, Alpha Time Group and, uh, and, and, and so forth and so on. And we have many discussions, so we see this traction and I'm 100% convinced that it would be for the, for the best in the region and also for the French brands looking at this region.
Uh, Patrick, over to you again. If if you can give like maybe a, again, I want to I, I want to try and give them like a step by step breakdown in terms of entering a market. Uh, again, you can speak with respect to Abu Dhabi, but yeah, if there is something they have a game plan in terms of like what to do and what not to do, how would you go about it? I think uh, I mentioned earlier um, Abu Dhabi being one of the gateways, and obviously. Um, I'll talk more specifically about what we can offer for entry into the GCC through that, through that gateway. But the number of options have really grown within the region over the, over, over the years. So the strategy, homework, and blueprint that brands have got to do, customer understanding, the nuances between the different markets, whether you're in the luxury sector or more in a hybrid sector aspiration, and so on. So that homework is essential as you, as you prepare to come into the market. And then I think you can meet with a lot of, the, a lot of experts. Uh, at Adio, what we believe in is basically being the accelerator. Uh, we know the city is one of the, it is the safest city in the world. We have access to talent across multiple industrial sectors, knowledge, Somebody mentioned this morning is a new fuel, and actually it is. When you look at the number of talents uh, globally that have entered the retail stage sector from retail technology companies to retailers in themselves, great designers as well, and uh, platforms like the Shalu Group and, and others that can really bring you that, that leverage effect. So the, the final solution uh, and recommendation is one that fits perfectly your own strategy. Uh, generally speaking, don't come into the market, or you may want to try it on the marketplace, but evaluate the market, and if you see a roadway to multiple stores, multiple countries, then that becomes interesting. And the number of potential incentives that are therefore then available is actually quite commensurate. I'll just give you a couple of examples. Uh, in, in Abu Dhabi, we recently set up a... Uh, a, a fund to basically accelerate uh, customer experience innovation. So if a brand is not in Abu Dhabi, if you're coming up with a concept which is unique, first to the world, and you bring it to Abu Dhabi and then to the rest of the GCC, the government intervention will help you basically uh, land. And we believe that the point is to de-risk the entry of brand into the GCC more or less over there for three years. After three years, you've got to take the crutches away and the PNL has got to work by itself. But we all understand that this is a new, new market. Uh, new competencies, you have to learn to navigate, and we just want to facilitate the economic access. And there are multiple ways through government incentives, and if you're setting up your headquarters, that we are able to do that as well. And from my point of view, time is playing a very, very strong factor in that. So it should be now. <laughs> uh, I think we, uh, yeah, we are running out of time, and I think, uh, you know, We've been hearing this over and over again through the course of the day. If you want to enter the market, now is the right time to do it. Do not wait, because if you do wait, you're going to become a follower. You'll not be a leader. Uh, just to wrap things up, because we are running out of time, uh, can I just have like all of you, again, share maybe like one or two pieces of adv advice uh, that you think is an absolute must when it comes to brands entering the GCC? So it can be either a specific do or a specific don't, but yeah, an absolute must they should keep okay, in mind. Okay, I would be talking on behalf of the Qatari consumer, yes, due from my experience. Yeah. The Qatari consumer is a very smart client. He knows what to buy, mm -hmm. and he has a very high-end taste, plus he's expecting the best the best service, uh, the best collection, uh, the best out of the best. He doesn't mind traveling to, to, to shop. He buys from Qatar and from Paris, from London, from New York, doesn't matter from where. As long as he's getting what exactly he's, he's looking for with the best service. So I think loyalty program is very, very important to keep this consumer in your sight. Yeah. It's a, it's a very high bar to reach, but that is what yes. is good. Okay. I think this is number one. Cool. Uh, Hugo, same question. Yeah. Uh, I will be very simple. I would say not to oppose brick and mortar and digital. Both are serving the needs of the other. It's the, the two sides of the same coin. Don't focus on just one thing. Go ahead, uh, Patrick. Meet the operators. The region is, is wide open in terms of you have, generally speaking, entrepreneurial governments who are very active in the private sector, in the public sectors, and are there to enable your success in those countries. And therefore, come firsthand, meet with your operators, 
evaluate the different options that you have in front of you in terms of distribution strategies. Can you go 100% by yourself? It's possible in several markets right now, but come, listen, and then you come back and you do the blueprints and you make your decisions. Absolutely, and again, we have a great collaborator in Business France who will help you get into the region. Uh, Geoffrey. Three things, partner, partner, partner. The right operator, the right influencers, the right local designers to work with, collaboration. Um, I think we are missing something very important, which is the Gen Z generation. They, they are the future, so we need to think how they think. They are the trendsetters. They influence the trends and the market, and I think we need to take those things into consideration. With their input, these are, they don't want to have a normal experience. They want to have a different experience. They want to, something different. So they are the main people that we need to look at and think about, specifically in Saudi, 70% are below the age of 30. So you can imagine how the future is going to be and what we need to think about. Thank you. If I can ask an additional question. Uh, oh, yes, it shows me finished, but still I'm going to ask the additional question. For brands who are seeking to partner with Alote, what are you looking for? This is like a direct pitch, yes. so feel free. We're looking for innovators, something different, different experiences. We're looking for people that are willing to partner with us to not just be in the main cities, to actually give this quality of life and give these experiences to people that live in tier two and tier three cities. Because we're looking at the whole kingdom. We're not looking at specific you know, target audience or a certain percentage. We're looking at everyone and how can everyone benefit from what we can offer. All right. And Sorry, please go. Yes, we are looking at adding value. Uh, and at the end of the day, that's what counts. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for staying through the entire conversation. I hope it was insightful. Um, and I guess, Deline, it's back to you. Yes.